everybody, this is Elon, and I want to do a quick video on the differences between Dossier Paris and Illustrissimo. I grew up doing Dossier Paris most of my life. I trained with Kakoi Cagnetta's grandson, Chris Bautista. The other one, I was lucky enough to meet Tommy Daitang and train privately with him under Illustrissimo system, and he was fantastic. And there's a fundamental difference between both systems, and that's what I want to talk about today. Pow, pow, inside, inside fighting, yeah, dangerous. Dangerous martial arts. Pow, pow. Ooh, ah. Dossier Paris favors, I don't care what anyone says, because of the evolution of the art through WEC op tournaments and all their type of sparring, more impact weapons, the motions favor that, whereas Illustrissimo stayed very much bladed. And the other difference between them is the range at which they fight. Illustrissimo will favor long range fighting, and Dossier Paris will actually favor more close range to medium range fighting. And Kakoi Cañete did something called Escrito, which he combined some Judo and Aikido movements and throws into the stick fighting and locks as well. I'm gonna first start with Illustrissimo to show some bladed movements and some long range movements and show how they different, how they're different from what you would do if you had an asp. And just how the whole fighting approach is different when you have a blade. So, one thing common to both systems, and this is, I think, all Filipino martial arts, is that the primary target is always the hand because that is the weapon, right? If I can cut your hand, you drop your blade, you win. Now, one of the main things you'll see in Filipino martial arts in Illustrissimo is that they will favor the lead hand with the lead leg because they like range. So if you're far away from me, I don't wanna have my weapon in the rear hand and hide behind it because now I can't reach you. You could cut me here, you could cut me here, you could cut me anywhere, whereas here, I have something not only to protect, but I also have something to reach your hand and do a very quick, chop to your hand and you'll see this movement a lot this was one of the first things i learned in illustration was just here you don't load up you don't pull back you just drop and cut the hand drop and cut the hand that's a very very nice movement in illustration another thing they do is they pull back the lead leg it's like a ghost step where they pull it back and then they do a circular strike now just looking at the movements let's just look at some of the movements with illustration here because i'm so blade sensitive because I'm aware of this, I always have to make sure that either I'm stabbing or I'm slashing. I will never hit with the flat part. Additionally, when I'm blocking, I will block with the flat part and not block with my blade because the weaker blade will lose here and I'll chip away at it and I'll ruin my blade or I'll crack it. Whereas here, if I cut, I can keep moving. So what you'll find in Illustrissimo is a lot of forward movement and backward movement with the go step and they're cutting all the time. Stab to cut, stab to cut. So I'll move a little bit here and I'll show you. As you can see, the movements are always stab, slash, stab, slash, stab, slash. And even when they block, they don't block counter, which is something you'll see in Dossier Paris. What they'll do is they'll cut through the strike, they'll allow the strike to, fl uh, to flow through to stab, right? So you'll see that in Dossier Paris, there's a lot of very hard kind of blocks like this. You just don't see them as much in Illustrissimo because they favor that range. They favor allowing the strike to continue so that they can stab slash. So it's very machete centric and it teaches you to fight a very specific way, which I love. The movements in Illustrissimo, the arm extends out as you're cutting. You see how when I'm cutting now, I'm not keeping my hands tight to my body, which is something you'd see like in Valinto Walk, you see it in Dossier Paris, right? Like tight movements like this, you're seeing an extension. I wanna get as far as I can with my weapon because I don't want you to get close. I wanna cut your hand. Let's look at, and what you also won't see is something called an a balitok or any of these strikes like this with teeks because you'd be hitting with the flat part of the blade. Wouldn't make sense. I would want to cut you. I'd want to do a more circular slicing movement. By contrast, Dossier Paris, literally the opposite. You always still do want to hit with the tip of the stick, but what you'll find is a lot more whipping movements. Why? Because when I have a blunt weapon, I'm not worried about what part I connect with, right? And also the disarms are much more prominent here because I'm dealing with another impact weapon, meaning I can put it under my armpit. Meaning if I get close, I can grab it and we can end up in these kind of fights.
Here's some footage of me training with Grandmaster Chris Bautista. And what you'll see in this video is that we do a lot of those movements that I was talking about, those really tight blocks, those hard blocks to an immediate counter. We use a lot of wetik, a lot of balitok, those flat part of the blade whipping mo motions that I was talking about. And you'll see a lot of in close tight fighting leading to a disarm and a takedown. You'll vice versa now, which is very interesting, see that when we do go to blades, uh, which you can see here, we fight very similarly. The techniques don't change that much in Dossier Paris between the impact weapon to the bladed weapon. And you can see we're still fighting very tight. We're still trying to get close. We're still trying to get the disarms. And these are drills. This is not a representation of reality because this is not how a, a fight actually happens with a knife. But it is very good to train this way. I can explain why in another video. It's just one tool for training. Additionally here, you'll see that when we go empty hand, we still fight and train a very similar way. Now, interestingly enough, in Dossier Paris, at least under Chris Bautista, we did something called Yao Yan, uh, and that was like a kickboxing style, which was very, very brutal. But these drills, these dirty boxing drills, it's called Pangamot, teach you to do certain things like limb destruction, countering, and how to move a certain way, and they do have value as well, which I can always jump into in another video as well. Okay, let's jump back to me explaining the stick fighting. Right, and I will sometimes, as the person approaches me, here I'm in lead foot. I might favor cutting to rear foot because they're close, because I'm allowing them to fight close because in Dossier Paris, it's a impact weapon. I can put it under my armpit to switch sides. I can grab the other side of the, of the impact weapon and start fighting here. Another thing you'll see in, in Dossier Paris also is slapping the body, right? So as I'm striking, You'll see a lot of abanico movements, which are these fanning movements, and I smack. And people say, why do you smack? Why, why, why are you smacking your arm? What is that? Two things. It's hand sensitivity. I'm maybe using it to treat it as if it's active. And this way, if they strike at me, I'm parrying their hand and I'm countering. So my hand is alive. It's not just sitting there like this. Why? Because we're in hand trapping range here. We're closer. And because when I, I move my hand, I can use it to generate force pushing my weapon back. So if I strike here, look how much more force I generate as I come back. So I'm not only parrying the strike, I'm also generating more force behind my strike, especially for backhand. So what you see here with Dossier Paris, it's crazy hot today outside, by the way, and humid in Florida. So there's Watiks, Balitok, Abanico, which are these whipping strikes. Now the difference here, again, look, I'm hitting with the blunt part and hitting again with the blunt part. If this was Illustrissimo, I would slash, I would stab to a slash versus a hit and a hit. Slash, stab, hit, hit. Slash, stab, which is what a bladed weapon would do. Hit, hit. And so in real time, it creates this kind of flowy movement that a lot of people bash, but has a lot of value when you start understanding what these movements actually are, right? Again, this is not to say that Dossier Paris doesn't use knives. There's a lot. And it's not to say that Illustrissimo doesn't teach you to use impact weapons because both are interchangeable. But those are the fundamental differences between range and impact weapons.